Alright guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the practice algebra exam, starting with question number 12. Question number 12 states, an electric cable of length 5.675 miles is connected in series with a cable of length 9.078 miles. What is the length of the resulting cable? Now in the last video, I kind of mentioned how one of the goals that we have here with story problems and word problems is to take the information from the verbal expression and put it into a mathematical equation. One of the ideas that I would like to introduce to you today is this four-step approach that was inspired by George Polya. He's a very famous mathematician. And his four-step approach to story problems is, it works wonders. So his four-step approach is the following, and I'll explain what each step means from a mathematical sense. The first one is to understand the problem. This doesn't just mean reading the problem. What it means is to understand what they are looking for in terms of what you are trying to solve for or evaluate. Um, what this step allows you to do is to define a variable. Now, although this four-step approach is for a lot of word and story problems, it works very well with evaluation problems as well as um, other um, equation and expression problems as well. The second step is to devise a plan. Devising a plan is probably the, the most difficult of the four steps. What it wants you to do here is to form an equation using the variables that you define in the first step. And sometimes forming the equation based off of what you're trying to solve for can be rather tricky. Step number three is to execute the plan which means to carry out your equation. Okay, or solve for your variable. All right, then step number four is to look back. Looking back is one of the most beneficial things that you can do when it comes to mathematics. The reason for that is, is what it allows you to do is to question of whether or not your solution or solutions make logical sense. For example, um, in chemistry, um, pressure times volume is equal to the number of moles times the rate uh, R constant times temperature. If you are solving for volume and for some reason you get a negative volume, you did something incorrectly because volume is a unit of measure that can't be negative. Um, another unit of measure that can't be negative is distance. So like in physics, um, distance equals rate times time. So Distance is another unit of measure that can't be negative. So looking back really allows you to answer the question of whether or not your answer that you come up with when solving for your variables makes logical sense. You can ask yourself, is this answer possible? And does it make sense under the circumstances that I am given in the question? So that being said, let's go ahead and follow this four-step approach for this problem. An electric cable of length 5.675 miles. So right then and there, I'm going to establish a cable, C sub 1, equaling 5.675 miles. And then, is connected in series with a cable of length 9.078 miles. I'm going to go ahead and do C sub 2 for 9.078 miles as the second cable. Now, as you're reading these verbal um, expressions and story problems, these word problems, you're going to notice that there are key words that indicate how you can form your mathematical equation. One of those first words that I want to introduce you is connected. Connected usually means or will mean the sum of something. You are taking two things and putting them together. So you're taking the mathematical sum of the two. And then what is the length of the resulting cable? So since we're going to be taking a mathematical sum here, we can do so. So we'll take 5.675 miles and add 9.078 miles. And we will get 5 plus 8 is 13, carry the 1, 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, um, <clears throat> 9 plus 5 is 14, 
and the decimal goes right here. So 14.753 miles is our answer, and that is uh, uh, indeed choice letter C. Now, let's look back for step number four. If we wanted to make sure that this answer makes logical sense, the first thing that we can ask is, well, if, if this is a sum, then the value we come up with has to be larger than both of the two answers, our, our original variables, which it is. 14.753 is greater than both 9.078 and 5.675. That's a good start. Another way that we can check our answer is if we take 14.753 and subtract either of these two values, we'll get the other value. So what I mean by that is if we take 14.753 miles, subtract off 9.078 miles, we will indeed get 5.67 miles, which again allows us to conclude that our answer does make logical sense. Okay. All right, let's look at the next question. Question number 13. <clears throat> oh, actually, I'm going to leave that up. Actually, I'm going to put this back up there for, for this question as well. Question number 13 is, a rectangle of the length of a rectangle, I'm sorry, is 1.24 inches while its width is 3.09 inches. What is the area of the rectangle? So going with our plan here, understanding the problem. So the length of the rectangle is 1.24 inches. So I will define a variable right from the get-go. The length is equal to 1.24 inches. I'm going to shorthand uh, inches with in here. While the width is 3.09 inches. Now the question asks, what is the area of the rectangle? So now we understand the problem. One way that you can also better understand these kind of word problems is drawing pictures. Drawing pictures works wonders with these types of questions because they really allow you to visualize what's going on. Now remember, a rectangle is a four-sided polygon that all four, uh, four angles are 90 degrees, where the two pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Um, of two pairs of parallel sides, I'm sorry. Meaning that these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent. Now, what we're going to do is devise a plan. So we're going to take these two values and we're going to solve for the area. Recall that the area of a rectangle is equal to the products of its length times its width. So then we'll use this equation to execute the plan of solving for the area. So we're going to do 3.09 times 1.24, okay? Now, 9 times 4 is 36, carry the 3, 0 times 4 is 0, plus 3 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. Placeholder for your uh, tens place, 2 times 9 is 18, carry the 1, 
0 times 2 is 2, uh, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6. Double placeholder for the next place, 1 times 9 is 9, uh, 0 times 1 is 0, and 3 times 1 is 3. Take the mathematical sum, we get 6, 1, uh, carry the 1, 9, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, 9 is 13, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 6 is 8, and then 3. Now we have to account for decimals. Remember, when multiplying decimals, we take the total number of decimal places equal to the number of the sum of the digits after all decimal places. What I mean by that is we have two, uh, two integers after the decimal here and two integers after the decimal here. That's going to um, be four total decimal places we account for. So starting from this end right here at the end of the integer, one, two, three, four. So our answer is 3.816, and I apologize guys, I did not put the answers for this question. Our choices are... <clears throat> inches, 3.816... Three point four two two eight three point four three six four Sorry, that's a bad three. And then three point eight three one six. And then as we can see our answer is choice letter E. Now, let's look back. If we wanted to make sure that this, um, this answer that we came up with made a logical sense. First of all, we're going to know that if we're taking the product, which is area being length times the width, the product of 3.09 times 1.24. Since both values are positive, as you can't have a negative length or width, our product is going to be larger than either of the two values, which our answer is indeed. The next thing that we can also do to solve for, uh, to, to make sure that our answer makes logical sense, is if we take 3.8316 and divide by either the length or the width, we're going to end up with the other corresponding value. So if we take 3.8316 and divide by the length, we'll get the width. So if we divide 3, um, 3.8316 by 1.24, we will get 3.09, okay? And again, these are this is how we're going to look back and make sure that this answer makes logical sense. All right, guys. So again, if you guys have any question, please never hesitate to contact or message me, okay? But this will be um, for questions number 12 and 13 from the practice algebra exam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.